no technical down front, but I'm just kind of really to continue with this, this, so this training camp with the continuous of the last training camp. So um, probably put in like maybe 130 something now. I, 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 I feel a little bit. What would like Joey Lopez, Kiba, what's up with that? You guys, you guys, you don't want to say nothing. Like, just keep it on the low. Good work though. How much do you know about Fran? I know enough. I mean, he's, uh, he's got everything to gain, nothing to lose. Uh, he swings for the fences with every time. Uh, he's got every, you know, he's, again, he's got everything to gain, nothing to lose. So he's a dangerous guy to fight. Uh, we had a list of maybe four or five guys that we went down. Uh, you know, I won't say their names, but like, you know, one guy undefeated, Scandinavian fighter. I uh, didn't want to take the drug test, and so that fell through. Another guy with a top ranked fighter, undefeated. Uh, that fell through at the last minute for a small, something minor in the contract. They didn't want to sign it. So, you know, it got to the point where it was crunch time, so we had to keep going down the list, and, and you know, everything got to brand. So, he accepted it, so that's what we got. Do you approach guys like that differently than you would somebody like a more known commodity? No, not mentally. It's all the same, you know, because, you know, in this business, you can't afford to have a bad night. So, you know, how can I afford to? Take anybody lightly, and even if even if you beat them, but you're not your best. I mean, that's not that's not you know what I'm trying to give the give, give the, the paying audience or the viewing audience, and I'm just not what I'm trying to give myself. So I, I don't look at it like that. I mean, it, it's a, the camp is still the same. It may be more focused when you're fighting guys like this because of the tendency to, to have a mental letdown and different things. Like that. So you said after the Paul Smith fight that the more frequently you fight, your arsenal opens up, and everyone knows your story. What do you feel about just being back? multiple times this year that you're fighting March and you're already back in August. I mean, it feels good, you know, it feels good. It's uh it feels good, you know. Uh, I don't know how much stock you can put into uh, the last couple of years. I mean it's, it's, a lot of people are talking about it but you know people gotta also you have to weigh in the fact that you know the amount of time that I have been doing which is all my life. And if you look at like Floyd Mayweather, he took a couple of hiatuses and it may have given him two or three more years. It was a mental break, it was a physical break, he wasn't taking punishment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, obviously because people aren't around us all the time, you don't quite notice the, the punishment that our bodies take. I mean, you know, my recovery process from night to night, I mean, just even last night between everything I had to do, I didn't get to bed till midnight after I worked out because, you know, you got ice, you got the dish, you got and, and Taking those couple years where maybe you're not fighting as frequently, uh, it's not always a bad thing, especially late in your career. Andre, third fight is light heavyweight. How do you how are you feeling? Second fight. Well, Te technically, yeah, good. yeah. How are you feeling with the weight? Is it I is it good? good feel real good? Feel okay. More like I said last time. All right. Uh, a little bit happier fight week. Um, <laughs> Can you eat a little, maybe eat a little bit more, you maybe do a little, little bit of everything more. Yeah. You, know, you get to eat, you get to drink. You know, you don't have to. Uh, the training is still the same. Um, Slight differences moving up in weight, but it's rough making weight, man. It's rough making weight, and, and I'm getting older. I'm not getting younger, so <laughs> yeah. the tablet slows down a little bit. It's a little bit harder, so yeah. 75 is, is, is good. You know, I'm happy. Good. How is fighting at home? Sometimes it's a double-edged sword because you're fighting in front of the hometown crowd. Is it more pressure or less pressure? It's a lot of pressure to fight at home. Uh, we, we've been here you know, enough times where you know there shouldn't be any mental letdown. There shouldn't be. If nothing outside of what the, the task is should be distracting. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not going to distract you, but it really shouldn't at this stage. I mean, you know, we're professionals. We've been doing this a long time, like I said. And we should know how to uh, you know, get engaged when it's time to get engaged, like now. And then when to tune things out and stay focused on what we have to stay focused on. Because even if, you know, fighting at home or fighting away, there's different, there's different challenges and there's different distractions, but there's distractions the whole time. You're still going to have people calling. You're still going to have people... Uh, you know, asking for things, wanting things. It's just, it's just part of what comes with the business. So you got to kind of learn how to balance it. So Corey Stevenson wanted me to ask you because you're his favorite fighter and you're kind of like his idol. And That's I talked to him this week, and he wanted me to ask you directly, his Olympic week, he wanted advice from you or just your personal experience for what he can expect, what few of us get to understand. Yeah, now we've talked about it before. You know, it's, it's tough because I kind of came up, I sound like an old man right now, but I came up <laughs> a little different. My dad. Uh, you know, Verge is the type of coach where you get away from everybody, you know, turn your phone off. I mean, we didn't have Snapchat in 2004. <laughs> we didn't have Instagram in 2004. At least I wasn't using Instagram. We had a we had a room that we all had to go huddle around with. It was, it was like desktop computers. 
but we all had to get news about what was going on, and we had to think, it's my turn, let me get in there. We had to, that's, how, that's how we got it, but now, you know, 2016, I see the team, USA team, that's Snapchat, Instagram. So, part of you wants to tell them, shut it down, do it like I did, but that may not be the right thing. He knows what he has to do. He's been winning for a long time. All those kids know how to do it. He is just, understand why you're there. Um, understand why you're there. Understand that you're not going to get this moment again. We don't typically repeat as Americans when you go to the Olympics. So, just understand why you're there and take it seriously. I think everything else will fall in place. Is he your pick for gold? I think we have, you know, several several people, male and female, that can win gold medals. But he's definitely one of the top picks. He's winning. That's him. He knows how to win. Can you explain to the casual fan what it takes to make it, what it takes to make a fight like this, and how small contractual details like drug testing and and money or whatever the case is, you know, not mentioning no names, how it can make the fight fall, fall through. Because casual fans like to say, well, he's scared and all of that, but you're not knowing the business of boxing. Yeah, but when people say other people are scared, you know, sometimes people are scared, but uh, at this level, I haven't seen a lot of scared people, you know what I mean? Uh, by the time this is, you know, not the right situation or, or like you said, something contractual, but I can't, I can only speak for me, like, you know, my goal has always been, as, I, as I've gotten you know, deeper in my career, to gain more control, you know, get more leverage, to have certain things with kind of like drug test. Um, and, you know, he is to have a good team. I've got a great, great lawyer, Josh Dugan, a great manager, a great promotional team, by the nation. And they're going to make sure that language is right. They're going to make sure that the details are right. And again, the casual fan, they just want you to get in there and fight. But, you know, you got to understand where they come from. There's some ignorance there because they don't know. But this is very much a business. And before just combat, you know, business has to be handled and business has to be taken care of. So um, I think fighters and all athletes should be un unapologetic about, you know, taking care of business. And that way when you get into that ring, you get on the field, you get wherever, you know, get on the court, your mind can be free and you know that, that you've done everything you can do. And now it's just time to go to work and do whatever. So it's very important. It's another um, 